we're going to look at stencils and shapes in this video. First thing I want to look at is something called the document stencil, which I think you'll find really useful. Uh, to get to the document stencil, what we do is go to more shapes. We're in the stencils area over here and then just go down to show document stencil. Now the document stencil appears here. I'm actually going to drag it out of this task, uh, task plane area over to a separate area over here. Now at the moment it's completely empty, but watch what happens. If I add process shape to my drawing, the process shape appears in the document stencil. That'd be the same for any shapes that I <coughs> then add to my um, drawing. Now the advantage of having the shape here is that we could edit that shape. We could change its colour, we could change the data properties behind the shape, uh, we could put some default text in, whatever we wanted to do. Whereas over here I am actually unable to edit any of the master properties behind this shape because these are the ones provided by Visio and I cannot edit them. But over here, if I right click on this shape, I can edit the master shape. So let's look at how that may be an advantage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the shape and I'm going to go to edit master, edit master shape. So all I'm seeing on the screen now is the shape itself. The drawing is kind of behind the current window. And what I can do is select that shape and try some formatting. So I'm going to apply some of these standard colours here. If you apply some of these thin colours, it gets a bit confusing. So uh, I'm going to apply some a green background and maybe I'll apply an orange border. Um, I could also put some text in. Maybe I want to... Uh, have some default text, maybe just a placeholder text, and I could also um, format that text. So maybe I want to make it slightly bigger, and maybe I want to change its color and make it bold. So that's how my I want my process shapes now to look. I mean, I could also change the size; that would work as well. Now, once I've finished changing and formatting my shape, I would close down shape window so I click on close window there and it says update process in all of its instances I'll say yes and this is my shape over here now it hasn't actually formatted this shape as such but that's really because of this annoying thing with themes if I went to the kind of uh, no theme option there you'll see that it has actually carried over at least some of the formatting but if I drag this shape onto my drawing here, this is a better example. It has actually brought over all the formatting, including the border and the color of the text, etc. So although you have to add one shape uh, to initially get this process on the document stencil, you should then add the shapes from the document stencil uh, going forward. So I can get rid of this one now. Obviously, if I added something else, it too uh, would have that formatting. Now, if I decided I want to change the formatting, I could right click on this um, shape and I could go to Edit Master, Edit Master Shape. And maybe I decide I want to change the color of that text to something more. Stands out a little bit more, so I've changed it to red. Close this down, update all instances, and you can see the text um, is red. So this would be really useful if you have like a, a look that you want for all your processes in your document or all your other shapes just add them once to your document and then format them in the document stencil now the other thing you can do with a shape is actually add some data to it so um, what we're going to do is go to edit master shape again but we're going to right click on the shape and go to data shape data now you may or may not have seen um, these fields before uh, when you've done this but these are the current fields that can be stored for uh, this type of shape so you've got cost process number owner function start date end date status which might be quite useful and close that down a little bit more because what i actually want to do is um, add a field to that list so i'm going to go to data 
define shape data instead. So what I want to do is add an additional field to my shape data. So I click on new down at the bottom here and the field's going to be a kind of department drop down list. So my labels department type of uh, field will be a fixed list. So a drop down list that you can't enter other values into. So these are my choices, HR, IT, uh, sales. So each item in the list is separated by semicolon. So I click on OK. And now if I looked at my shape data, I've got that extra field at the top there for department. So I'm going to close this uh, shape window down and I'm going to update processes. So now if I go to view up here on the uh, ribbon, go to task panes and uh, shape data, you can see now that I can choose from my drop down list a department for each of these shapes. Okay, and obviously I could fill in the other the other fields that were already available. Now what we've done so far is great if you just want to use this format of this process shape for this particular drawing. But say you spend quite a lot of time formatting your shapes and you think to yourself, well actually that is the look that I want for all my drawings going forward or my flowcharts going forward. So what we could do is actually save these formatted master shapes in uh, a customized stencil, a stencil that you're going to create for yourself. So how do we start that process of creating the stencil? Well, what we can do is just right click on the shape, go to add to my shapes, add to new stencil, or if you had an existing stencil to an existing stencil. So we haven't got one yet, so we'll call it to new stencil. So um, what I'm going to do is call this flow chart shapes. And it's saved on my laptop anyway to the my shapes folder. So um, it's actually going to be a file. So we click on save. Now what I can do is actually view that stencil over here. So I'm going to go to more shapes, uh, my shapes, flowchart shapes, and you can see now that this stent, uh, this shape now appears over here. So you know if I was to create uh, a decision and I formatted my decision, um, maybe I could have a green background on that. Close that down yes then what I can do is I can just um, actually drag this from my document stencil into my flowchart shapes ah so this stencil is read only at the moment uh, would you like to edit the stencil so this operation can be completed yes and then I'd need to save it you can manually put a stencil into edit mode just by right clicking uh, you can toggle this edit mode on and off, but it, it did it for me there. Um, okay, so if I close this document down and started a new uh, drawing, this document stencil is not going to be available, but my new customized flowchart shape stencil will be for other drawings. Let's just see if that's true. So I'm going to close down this drawing. I don't want to save. And I'm going to go and create a new basic flowchart. Now, if I went to the document stencil, the document stencil is empty. So, but what I can do is go and open up my flowchart shape and you can see that they are saved there. It's quite nice to work with. So once you've definitely got your design correct and you don't think you're gonna make much in the way of changes, uh, you can save your shapes to your stencil. If I change this shape here, if I edit the master, I'm going to need to put this stencil into edit mode. I can edit the master here. If I change the background color to yellow, what you'll see is that it doesn't update the shapes in the drawing that are based on it. So that was the advantage of the document stencil. So get them pretty much finalized in terms of how they're going to look and then you can place them over into your custom stencil. Remember to save any changes you make to your custom stencil as well.